Section 1B of AB 5 says that one of the reasons for the enactment of AB 5 was lost payroll taxes. Payroll taxes includes personal income taxes. Okay, so this is, this is going to affect taxes. This is not, should not be a surprise. Payroll taxes includes the, the, the income taxes, which are enforced by both the EDD and the FTB jointly. So they're going to have to come up with a consistent position on how they treat AB5. All right, so this will be, this will be a tax issue, no question. It will be EDD and FTB audits. And here's what it does. <clears throat> Once an employer decides, even, even if you accept that this is just a labor code section, which it's not, once an employer treats somebody as an employee for labor code, do you think that they can treat them separately for California tax purposes? Not happening. Once the employer makes that decision that they're going to follow AB5 and treat that person as an employee, they're going to do it for labor code and California income tax. And once they do that, they're also going to do it for federal income tax. It is, it is it, as, as much as we can d discuss the philosophy that, that theoretically it's impossible to bifurcate, in reality, in practice, it's not going to happen. So this is going to apply for federal income tax purposes as well because the employers are going to do it for us. Whether you like it or not, whether you agree or not, that's what's going to happen. So now let's look at AB5. It completely changes the law on employee status. It is a complete rework. Here's the new rule. If the worker is involved in the usual course of business of the payor, they are an employee. Whether or not they would otherwise be an independent contractor, whether or not there is any control by the payor, that is a fundamental shift in the treatment of workers. Right? This is not a small change. And, and, and the three factors, there is no three factors. There's one factor. There's one factor. If you work in the usual course of business of the payor, you are an employee, and it applies to all payments to all persons. Persons is defined in the labor code to include corporations. It includes entities. It includes partnerships. It includes, they very carefully used the word payments to any person. So there's very clear that AB5 applies to a payment to a corporation that performs services in the usual course of business of the payor, like an actor to a studio, like a director to a studio. The burden of proof is on the payor, all right? The burden of proof is on the payor, so that, and that's a tough burden to, to prove. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give, by the way, I'm giving, gonna give both sides of this equation, all right? I'm gonna give both sides of this story, but let's be clear Let's be very clear on the, on the, on the issue of what's, what has happened here and the risk. There is a very narrow exception. By the way, to the extent you had any doubt that it applies to payments to corporations, there's a very narrow exception that applies to payments to corporations that meet 12 factors. You ain't meeting them. All right? Not happening. Read the 12 factors. You've got to meet all of them. You ain't going to meet them. Maybe, maybe a writer working at home. Maybe a producer working at home. But actors and directors, forget about it. All right? They have to, one of, one of the factors is they, they have to have a separate business location that is separate from the business location of the payor. They have to control the hours and the, and the um, location of the work. All right? So now you have a statute, let's just be clear, that, applies to, that clearly applies to payments to all corporations that perform services in the usual course of business of the payor, and there's a very narrow exception which you don't meet. And so now you're a payor and you're faced with this statute that says that you've got to treat this person, this corporation, as an employee. What do you do? Because the whole world is based on the assumption that an employee is an individual. W-2 form, W-4, all the reporting. I can tell you what someone does that follows it literally is they're going to treat whoever shows up as the employee. That, that is the, the interpretation of that 
exception, and the interpretation of AB5 is that don't show up with a loan out, right, if you're going to take it literally. So I think that the, that the interpretation will be that, and when, if they, one interpretation would be that, the, that you look through wh whoever, whatever entity shows up and you look to the worker and you say, that is an employee. Um, here's the counter argument. Employee leasing companies. Employee leasing companies do not meet the requirement for the exception for the business to business because they do not control, because nobody meets it. And because they don't control the location and hours where the workers work. And so the, the, the argument is that, that Joint employee status, which is employee leasing, is a classic situation. The argument is that if that survives, it survives in the face of a conflict with the statute because it doesn't meet the business to business exception. And if that survives, then perhaps there's this implied exception for dual employee status. And there is, in fact, an, a section in the unemployment insurance code that specifically recognizes this dual status employment and permits the first company to be treated as the employer of record. And the question that with, the, with a rolling drum roll is was that intended to apply to a, a bona fide employee leasing company with a number of employees or is it, can you, can you shoehorn a loan out corporation into this implied exception, if you will? And this, this is really the, this is the big, this is the big question. Um, maybe the statute of AB5 only applies, and this is what la labor lawyers always think this, it only applies if the person isn't an employee of anybody. And, there, and, and the assumption is because they're, if, as long as you're an employee of somebody, then you're entitled to all these labor code protections. What that misses, though, is that one of the purposes of AB5 is to stop the loss of payroll taxes, and that includes personal income taxes. And oh, by the way, there is a massive loss of personal income taxes through the use of loan out corporations. It is massive, and it's not a secret. That is why we do it. Um, now, let's also address the wonderful, um, time-honored acceptance of loan out corporations. They're not. They don't work for athletes. They've been blown apart in the courts. The one actor case that did get in front of a court recently was called Flug. It was a tax court memorandum decision. It got blown apart. And for some odd reason, the IRS has just backed off the issue. And so did the FDB. And they believe, they've, thank God, they've left us alone. All right, but, but I tell you, loan outs don't, if my, if my secretary shows up with a loan out, right, we would laugh, substance over form. If all the Uber drivers show up with loan outs and claim this exception, all right, the legislature will laugh because that's exactly what they were aimed at. That's why they have this entity to entity exception which an Uber driver wouldn't meet for a whole lot of reasons. Loan outs don't work other than for some bizarre reason in the entertainment industry because the IRS has just backed off the issue, all right. So that's where, that's where we're left. Um, and what is, by the way, so special about actors? <laughs> Are we really gonna go to the legislature and go, oh, we need an exception for actors because they're rich and famous and have all this money, and, and uh, Uber drivers don't? Like, it's gonna be an odd lobbying effort, but we're gonna have to make it, by the way. I mean, they, they already yeah. failed when when it came to 199 they, they There you go. It's not, it's not the most sympathetic group, all right? Um, now, what if, <clears throat> so, but, but, but I'm gonna give both sides of the story. You, the, what about the bona fide employee leasing agencies and how do they survive AB5? And if they survive, then you can, ar you have, your argument is that loan outs survive, all right? That's gotta be your argument. What if you get it wrong? Number one. Anyone other than a lawyer who advises an employer to treat somebody as an employee is personally liable for all the penalties if they are wrong. Accountants, 
business managers who tell somebody, as, to say to the studio, please respect this loan out. If they're wrong, and, and if there is an audit, they are personally liable under the California Labor Code. There is a $10,000 per misclassification penalty that is imposed. There is a $25,000 penalty per misclassification if there is a pattern of misclassification. We've had, I've seen audits where, the, where a, a relatively small um, tax assessment turned into f you know, like a million dollars of penalties because of this. All right, so the, the penalties are, you know, the odds are, this, there's a lot at stake here. And it's personal liability to the responsible persons. There's criminal liability. This is going to be a this is going to be a, a, a big issue. All right. So that's that's where we're left. We have the, we have we've heard the argument about why loan outs should survive. You know, look, custom and practice and life somehow they leave us alone. You've got the employee leasing argument, but but I will tell you what was what missed here is the is there should have been an express something. St the statute shouldn't be open on this issue. And, and we, as an industry, need to lobby between now and January 1 to try to get something changed. And, and this is why I think that we need to raise the alarm and people need to be aware that there's at least an ambiguity. Even if you disagree with me, you've got to acknowledge that there is at least an ambiguity on this issue and that, there's, and that we should be lobbying for a change in the law to clarify what's particularly how important the entertainment industry is to California and the implications of this. Um, now, the, the real question, all right, so it, it is, it's open. It's not clear. The answer is not clear. But here's what, what will the studios do? What will the studios do?